All right. And welcome to the new edition, the Masculine Geek Books and Broads, Volume 2. We're going to be talking about the book Swoon, Great Seducers and Why Women Love Them. And just a heads up, um, this would also be pumped out to Twitter and uh, retwatted on Twitter by both Rob and I. But I'm in Twitter jail for saying the phrase redneck mongoloid. And that is for a whole week. So I cannot twat until Monday, the end of Monday. And you know what? I'm strangely okay with that. <laughs> hey, that's <clears throat> my world. Right? I'm like, yeah, whatever. I yeah, can, whatever. I can, if I have to talk, I can talk briefly on my other private account. But anyway, this is the cover of the book. At least the cover of your book. Cover of Mine's my book. a little different. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like that one better, actually. Um, <clears throat> that one's a like a 1920s, 40s, 50s black and white yeah, style. This is just a 1930-ish. Yeah, this is a, a bit of like maybe a Renaissance painting or something. Yeah, so. that's what it kind of looks like. But it um, fits. <clears throat> even in comparison <clears throat> to the one I've got, they both the covers both kind of fit. It so. does absolutely. Now I will say this: um, I got up to the chapter four and page page 135 out of 246 so I'm, I'm halfway through i'll continue to read it yeah same um, here <laughs> but uh i haven't finished it either <laughs> i know right <laughs> oh, got too much shit going on seriously and i have other books in fact yeah. i i yeah. i don't know if i told you this i threw out my tv <laughs> yeah. no you didn't tell me that <laughs> i threw it out i was i was noticing that cuz i have a habit of I don't watch TV. I don't have cable, but I do have my Blu-ray player and my um, Amazon account hooked up to it by a fire stick. And I like to watch old movies and, and noir. And I was, you know, kind of doing research for laser dicks and a few other uh, books that I'm writing. I'm like, Oh, this is, this is writering. This is research. And normally what I would do is I would write and then reward myself with a movie. But I found I was getting lazy and not doing that. I'm like, so one day I'm, I'm looking at the TV. I'm like, you're getting the fuck out of here, asshole. <clears throat> I unplugged it, unhooked everything, removed all the apps, and threw that shit right in the dumpster. <clears throat> so now the TV stand is nothing but books that I have ready to read. So Nice. Yeah. So I'm going to do that probably for the remainder of this year. And wow. maybe next year I get another TV. But I'm not. If And if I do happen to want to watch something, maybe I'll throw it up on my phone. Maybe. <clears throat> but it's not a huge deal to me. I want to get focused on my writing, my reading, and my writing. Wow! So, the TV's fucking gone. Yeah, look at you, and you didn't even have to get on Twitter and talk about you know as an alpha male you should throw. <laughs> <laughs> you just... That's a isn't that the dumbest shit? It it really is. It's unbelievable. It really is. It, it really is. Uh, I give you credit because I'm sitting here thinking to myself, could I do what you just did? Could I literally take my TV off the wall and go throw it in the dumpster or something? And I'm like, nope. <laughs> nope. I can't because there's shit that I like to watch. And kind of like, you know, could I give up drinking? Now, from a perspective of like alcoholism, of course, if drinking yeah, yeah. actually becomes a fucking problem, I, oh, yeah, yeah. I could quit yeah. and be like, okay, I'm done with this shit. But it doesn't mean I want to give it up yeah and, and it's, it's not a problem for you no yeah. you know i'll admit i've spent a lot of time you know lately the last couple of months watching different uh series and binging them and getting through them hmm. and you know i could i guess i could be more productive i could be you know reading more writing more whatever but at the same time i'm kind of in this place of i'm good Kind of like when you had, you know, your throat cancer or whatever the hell it was going on over when we were back in uh, the ocean. Gold by the sea. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was and I was kind of like, dude, you probably ought to get that checked out. And you're like, I've lived a good life. Yeah. I, I, I honestly, if I have throat, I don't care. Right. I, I, don't, I don't care. I'm not putting me through any any kind of I don't, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure my wills is all set. And uh, what you guys have a party when I go. Right. Uh, it's whatever you know it's like i'm not i'm not putting myself through that shit well and that's kind of how i see it too both from the the heavy existential end of you know what what is it you have type of thing mm -hmm. but also just in the sense of like i i respect what you did and i couldn't do it 
But. As far as like throwing the television out, it's like, no, <laughs> can't do it because I still get too much entertainment from it because, you know, I've got my YouTube hooked up to it. I've got, you know, Netflix, of course, because got a Netflix and chill with the chicks. You know. Well, that's true, too. Well, my, my Netflix right now, my sort of Netflix and chill would be. um well, there's also the the bondage kind of takes over that, and that, that's a whole well, thing yeah. by itself. But then I have uh, the fireplace. I've got the jazz, and then there's all f cool, fun things you do in front of the fireplace, including different bondage and you know other things. Right. So it, right. that that that's my backup. But if I have to, I'll I'll, I'll go to their house. I don't, <laughs> you know. Good point. Good point. It's kind of funny when I think about that too, because like that's kind of what I end up doing is. If if I want a certain mood or vibe or whatever, I bring them here. Mm -hmm. If I want a different mood or vibe, I go there. Exactly. Or I take them somewhere else. You it's know? funny you're, we're talking about this because that's that place it's place is mentioned books. in here. Yeah. Yeah. Which is one one of the reasons why I liked it. It, it, had, it was a bit of a slow start because it had these categories of men. Some it was lambasting, some it was admiring, but it was it was overall it was good and I like her writing. Mm -hmm. It is written by a woman, and don't let that—I mean, it's don't let that deter you. Although yeah, there is don't, an under, don't spurg out on <clears> guys. There is there is an undercurrent of 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 feminism that you can't get rid of. I mean, she even comes out and says that on page. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Where is it? Uh, I have it here somewhere. She's basically talking about, oh, women still make 80 cents to a man's dollar. Like, oh, what, she's what? doing the wage gap. She, yeah, people. she actually she comes out and says it. Does, it's not even implying. She just comes out right. like, lady, just, just Whatever. Stop. Just yeah, stop. but you know what? <laughs> For her saying that and we could say hush, at the same time, I also look at it and say, dude, women are going to women. It, oh yeah, that's why I'm not I'm not I'm not throwing this away in rage. She's still well, yeah, a very good writer. That you thing, know. you know. Oh, it's a woman who wrote it. Ree! You know like, <laughs> exactly. No, that doesn't guys, bother me. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's like guys, if you're gonna you know flip out over the fact that it's a woman talking about it or whatever, she's not giving out dating advice. Okay. No. That, that's no. one of the things I do like about this book. So here's um part of why I got this book. Okay. And it goes back to you, Vince. It goes mm -hmm. back to when I was out there in Jersey and I was raping your fucking, <laughs> your, 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 your book closet, you know, My your bookshelves. Your, yeah. yeah. And I was taking pictures because, you know, you, you've got, you know, you're very eclectic. You have a little bit of everything. You got a lot of different things that, you know, you can learn a lot about a man by what he reads. And I'm looking at, you know, all the different things that I saw. And I'm just like, okay, he's into this. He's into this. Most of it, I was like, oh, that's cool, whatever. And there's some that I was like, meh, not my thing. And then, of course, there's the stuff that I'm like, oh, hello. What do we have in <laughs> The here? bondage shelves and the, well, and the sadomasochism you, you, you and the philosophy. What? Hang on, hang on. You know, the, the bondage and all that. Yeah, I have an interest in it, but not to the level you do. And that's okay. So that one even to me was kind of like, okay. You know, I get it. it. It makes me understand you better from a philosophical, you know, from the book end of things. I, it makes me understand you better. And I know some of it, I've read some of it. Some of it, I'm like, yeah, that's, I get it. Okay. Some of it, I'm like, eh, whatever. But it's the, you've got stuff similar to Swoon, like you've got the memoirs of Casanova. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's where I was like, wait, Casanova wrote a memoir? I didn't know this. And so, you know, I had to take pictures because otherwise, you know, my little fucking cat brain will forget everything. And it's like, okay, I'm going to have to look this up because one of the things <coughs> I've wanted to do, that I think you've done because you had multiple like Dasad and some of the other stuff that you have. Frank Harrison. Yeah, right. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're not just reading books on how to get the chicks. You're not just reading books on Shabari and how to tie a knot and all that kind of stuff. You're not looking just at technical manual stuff. Mm -hmm. You are reading the, the words, the thoughts, the feelings, the experiences of men who have done this. It's what there's, I call the creative spark. Yeah. Right. Well, you're also yeah. kind of studying the greats, if you will. Okay. Mm -hmm. Far too many guys don't do that. 
Or, as I've seen online, they read a blurb from Marcus Aurelius and think they're the next Marcus Aurelius. And it's like, I know, yeah, right? It's you don't hysterical. Get it. It is. And you can tell, you know, you can tell, oh, you're 23 and you read Marcus Aurelius. Good for you, brother. Except, you know, he didn't write that for you. Exactly. But when you, you know, you started looking at that, I thought, you know, kind of like uh, when we talked about the Alabaster Girl last time. Hmm. This is coming from a man who, whether you like him or you don't, whether you like Zan Perion or not, the dude has had amazing success with women. And so he decided to write a book about it. And it's not only, you know, kind of a fictional story where he's doing story time, which is great, but you're getting in his head. You're understanding where this guy is coming from. And if you can utilize that, adapt it, adopt it, whatever, it's it's only going to benefit you instead of hurt you. And that's kind of how I look at like even Desaad or Casanova. It's like, okay, these are guys that are real for one. They're not fictional characters that, you know, someone is writing about because, you know, it's not Batman. You know, it's not Spider-Man. It's not Darth Vader or whatever fictional hero. It's not even Don Juan because as far as I know, he's not even a real character. All right. These are real men who've walked the earth and had amazing success. And that's where I'm like, okay, I want to read more about those guys. And going back to Swoon, while she had a bunch of stuff to say that, you know, whamming, you know, whamming ain't shit. Okay, fine, guys, fine. She tries to dispel a lot of the, the stereotypes and the archetypes that are fictional. And she starts talking about people, men who not only some of them are, you know, people know the name. You, when someone says Casanova, everybody, unless you were born under a rock or something, everyone knows the name Casanova. OK, but they also, yep, Por Porfirino. OK, she talks about him. Real guy. All right. And then she even brings up some real life examples of everyday guys that she has met that have had some like i was about to say that's what i like too that she did that she juxtaposed with 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 people movies and and people in history guys in history but also guys now doing this stuff yeah, and gave not, an exam and they gave examples guys, of what they yeah. did right yeah, it's like exactly. it was almost like a almost like a a, a small simple prescription mm-hmm but it's the idea that she's not only looking at some of the greats from history, because I can already hear, you know, some of the guys out there moaning. Well, you know, Casanova was a different time period and Porfirino was a different time period. And that's not how it is today. And the world sucks and whamming ain't shit. <laughs> and I can hear it already, you know, that, oh, you're studying Casanova. Dude, that's dated. You know, that was a different time era. Human nature isn't dated. No, it's not. <laughs> and yet she's bringing up real life examples of guys that are still alive and they're not famous. You know, they're not writing autobiographies and, you know, having their own YouTube channel about, you know, I'm a Sigma male type of bullshit. But they have phenomenal success with women because it's women talking to each other going, holy shit, this guy. And somehow she's hearing about it or they're going to her saying, hey, we know a dude, you know. Uh, they can be useful, but at the same time, only up to a point. Okay, this is if I have my own personal take on this one, and that's. It's, it's the James Bond phenomenon, or as I call it, beating off to Bond, okay? James Bond is a fictional character, and he's an amalgam of all kinds of things, but no one man is ever going to embody all of those traits, okay? And I see far too many guys fantasizing, thinking, trying to make James Bond into a reality. And the truth is, he's multiple guys, Okay, and I get, I get it, I, and I respect what you're saying, and I'm not saying, yeah, and they did crank it up to 11. Okay, so I'm not a arguing a, a with a you, caricature, geeky. Yeah, yeah, I'm not arguing with geeky. You, you're right, geeky. You're right, but too many guys take it way too far, and then they start larping. 
Okay. And that's why I kind of have an issue with the whole James Bond characters. Way too many guys like, oh, you know, be James Bond. And I'm like, he's like seven different dudes. You know, do you really know who I James Bond is? People, what? Yeah, you know, there's there's multiple identities within this one character. And so I I kinda I kind of don't like using fictional characters as an example to base your behaviors off of. I would rather study, if you will, or observe or whatever you want to call it. I, I want to see real life examples. And even if it is a bit dated, like with Casanova, that doesn't mean the wisdom is not valid. And with this swoon, again, she's bringing up, you know, well, here's Ted and he's a dentist, you know, or he's this, you know, this dude that here's his thing. You know, this is what made him stand out. You know, it's his, it's his kind of his, his boyish, you know, it's not even necessarily his looks. It's the fact that it's his boyish charm, his, ah, oh, shucks, ma'am, I'm sorry. Did I, did I accidentally stick my dick in you while I was taking off my boots? That, that kind of thing, you know, and these are guys that are alive yeah. today and they're nobodies. They're unsung heroes in the seduction world. They're just you know? regular people out in the, in the working world. Yeah, they're just yeah. regular dudes that if you were to see them on the street, you you probably would pass them by, not even and think. And some of them, them, she's describing them. They're like not ugly, but they're like they're they're average. they're they're average and they're nondescript, but they have they have this love of life and a curiosity about women that is that draws women. Right. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, a, 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 a man can be very handsome and good looking and ripped and all this other shit and, and some money, but. If he falls flat in the personality and alive department, he's going nowhere. Right. Yeah. There's no there's no genuine desire. Exactly. And that was the, and yeah, and in all these examples that she gave and was giving, I'm, I like I said, I haven't I'm not all the way through the book, but yeah, and neither am I. It's 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 their, their they they live a very rich existence, and they just have this joy de vie, this love of fucking life. I'm like, well, that's what it means to be a masculine geek. That's basically what Rob, like Rob and I could be included in this book. Most not likely. patting ourselves on our back, but it's no. true. Yeah, not this isn't a flex or anything like that, but it's true. And that's that's the kind of literature that where I, I kind of found this one. And I was like, ooh, this looks interesting because she's talking about. Yeah, she brings up a few fictional examples, but most of it is historical, actual guys. But then she's also talking about present guys that, again, it's, you know, Tim the dentist or it's, you know, it's it's Harold the garbage man or something. You know, it's just some random dude, but he's just got this way that the women just kind of flock to him. And it's like, that's the kind of guys I want to be. And that's the kind of guys I want to talk to. That's the kind of guys I want to be around, yep. you know, and so this is the type of literature that I've been seeking out versus the, well, you know, how to be an alpha male in seven steps. Number five will surprise you. You know, I don't give a shit about any of that. It's like, fuck you. I, I don't care about your prescriptions. Tell me about the guy that for whatever crazy reason, the women just can't seem to keep their hands off him. I want to know about that guy. I want to yeah. know in his own words, as best as he can describe it. Even if all he says is, oh man, it's just a vibe, man. You just flow. That's better than, well, you know, three tips and tricks. Yeah, that, that's that, and that's mainly what these guys are saying when she asks them. They're like, "Well, I, I can't, I can't quantify I can't, it." It's like, it's like, it's like I said about when people ask me about being dominant. Like, it's like fucking breathing. How do am I? How am I going to tell you and describe breathing? You just do it. Something, something becomes ingrained in your, in your, in the, your very blood. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with these guys. They're just like, I don't know. I do it. <laughs> yeah. And and that's that's kind of to me why I chose this book in particular. And when I got it, I kind of – I didn't know shit about it other than um, – well, that's Vince's cover version. Here's mine. Yeah, I guess it's two different. I, I would suggest they, – they both, they both have the same – vibe one's more of a renaissance painting one's more of like a 30s 40s uh kind of dance kind of like prohibition era thing yeah, I, almost, I like both of them actually i do too but <clears throat> you know i i've already gotten the you know the pickup 101 
I've already gotten, uh, you know, the, the red pill, you know, you need to be, you know, watch out for whatever. And of course, all the garbage that's out there, and man, there's oh, yeah. a, a lot of that. Shit. that. And I've gotten to a point where I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm well past the 101 shit. I, I, okay, go lift and go do this and blah, blah, blah. Yep, I got you. Okay, I, I have that. I have that figured out. I can attract women. I can get around women. And, and women seem to think I'm pretty okay. They, they at least can tolerate me because they don't seem to run off too fast. So, okay, I'm good there. And I don't need to be the patriarchal father figure, you know, the peak fatherhood dude. You know, the, the best thing in life is being a father. Eh, go fuck yourself, dude. I got other things to do. I want to know about the, the guys that are the, the lovers, you know, the guys that, man, they just, it's like autopilot. They just show up and girls just kind of end up hanging around, hovering around them. And that's, uh, that's where I'm learning as much as I can, you know, with the, within the confines and the limitations of literature. Because ultimately, experience going out and doing it trumps everything. And that would be, you know, the biggest thing I can say when I see guys, you know, doing their, their get the girls course or whatever. It's like, dude, your best, your best knowledge is going to be you going out and doing it. You know, that's where I've made the greatest, you know, advances for me is going out and doing it. But it is the, you know, if I'm going to read about this stuff since I like it so much and I kind of, I can be one track mind and that's okay. I'm fine with what's Rob's thing. It's chicks. You know, he's got, he's got pussy fever and I'm fine with that. It's like, well, it beats politics and it beats stoicism and it beats, you know, Hey, did you see the latest with the Kardashians and Will Smith and Chris Rock and all this other bullshit? It beats the war over in the Ukraine you know, that I'm just like, fuck all that shit, man. It doesn't have any impact on me, but what does is women. Because I like them, I want to be around them, and I want to know how to be even better than I already am. And so what better way than to, hey, study at the feet of the ones that actually have done it. And it's like, okay, maybe I can somehow absorb some of their vibe, their mentality, figure out some things that I didn't know, because I definitely don't know enough. It, that's my own take for me. It's like, yeah, I don't know enough. No, that's a good, uh, a good solid, uh, good solid plan. I mean, that's that's one of the reasons why I, one of the many reasons why I read these books, <clears throat> um, just journals in general of men that have done great things, um, and on the line of doing great things with women, like the the, the journalist and writer and adventurer and self made lawyer uh, and linguist Frank Harris. Um, on volume middle of volume two, it's amazing. He emigrated here from uh, from Ireland in late 1800s, early 1900s. Like, actually, no, even earlier than that. But uh, yeah, but it's about his his life with uh, with his, his employment, his learning languages, himself teaching himself law and passing the bar by the skin of his teeth, and then arguing criminal cases in court. And his adventures with women. And it's funny because we were, I brought this book with me to the Village by the Sea this past October. And we we're yeah. talking about what is old is new again. A lot of what you read in his in his journal is describing, you could say, wow, this is the plight and the experiences of men and women today. Like a lot of guys, there's a, there's a lot of talk. And I stay away from it because I don't care, like traditional this and traditional that. When you go back and you look... <laughs> All uh, human nature and, and culture are interchangeable and downstream from one another. So when I, I go back and I look at what's being written during certain times, both in fiction and in, in journals. So let's take it back to like around the, the 40s, 50s, and 60s, and you're reading smut literature or what they call the uh, the sex pulps. And you're reading the... the uh, sort of that you're getting the zeitgeist at the time and you're thinking to yourself wow these these are people that you thought were traditional family people and and they're they're struggling with these these with adultery and and yeah sex, they, they're, sex. they're fucking degenerates is what you find out yeah yeah and and like so then you take it back even further and i'm, I'm reading this guy in like in the mid to late 1800s and he's 
he's hey, banging the wives. He's, he's banging the wives of land. <laughs> yeah, he's banging the wives of landlords, and he's, he's having sex with with uh, the, the chambermaids and all this. And you're thinking to yourself, "Wow, what the what what are these people going on about traditional this and traditional that and and like and just it's, it, if you want to follow that, that's fine. But it didn't exist the way you thought it existed." Exactly. It really didn't. So that's why I say when you I go back and read the fiction and the pulps and the sex pulps, what they call the sleeves pulps from the forties, fifties, and sixties, and read regular action pulp. Uh, go back and read journals of great men and what they're doing because it's boots on the ground. You're getting what what the women were like, what the food was like, how they interacted, the com camaraderie with each other. <laughs> that icon that Rob has is funny with the. Nick and, and Hank Hill, <laughs> but you're getting it. You're getting it. Like I said, a boots eye, a uh, boots eye, a boots on the ground, bird's eye view of what took place at that time or this time period. And it's a great snapshot. And you can you, you juxtapose that with what you think, you know, or it's been told to you about history. And I have to say, it's very eye opening. whether you're reading Casanova's memoirs, Frank Harris, um, Anything by the the great great classical writers, uh, and you're reading about how oh, like Franz Liszt, the uh, the composer and the musician, he was a, a crazy lazy ladies man. Benjamin Franklin, the fucking shit that he did. I mean, history likes to paint him as and whitewash his his his, his history with women, and make him this great you know statesman and, and inventor. And he was all those things, but he was a he was a fucking pussy hound that guy, even into his seventies and eighties. It's crazy. It's crazy. <clears throat> that's right bacon all this happened before and it will all happen again nothing is new under the sun that's why when you're if you read hemingway and uh, the sun also rises the sun also rises it's going to rise now it rose then and it rose before the same fucking way and everything under the sun there's nothing new we like to think it's new because we put a different spin on it or there's the the, the culture does things a certain way or, or you have a certain group of or you're just ignorant enough that you didn't know because you didn't go back and study it. Exactly. Hey, I, you know, and I'm not throwing shade at anybody because hell, I've done that. That it's when I first saw, you know, the memoirs of Casanova, I'm sitting there looking at that going, wait, he's a real fucking dude. Oh, yeah. I, I seriously thought Casanova was like Don Juan. I thought he was James Bond, a fictional character. It's like, oh shit, he's a real dude. And I'm figuring this out at 49 years old. That shows you how much I know. No, he's real. Yeah. <clears throat> but I never he, knew that. I never paid attention in, in history class or he never came up. <clears throat> every time I saw it, I just thought, oh, this is like Don Juan or something, you know, some fictional dude. And it's there like, is. Hey, no, he's he was real. Oh, shit. oh, yeah. There is a BBC version of Casanova and it's played by one of the Doctor Who guys. I forget his name. It's real good. I think it's in. It's either two or three parts, maybe four, and they're like an hour, an hour and a half each. I think I've seen one <clears> of the <throat> parts now that you mention it. That's that is really good, and that really that plays to his love of Henriette, the French adventuress. And that is that that'll tug at your heart, man. That'll be like, oh fuck. I mean, it was it was a one nightus, and it wasn't because he was still doing his thing. Mm -hmm. But they had real intense passion and love for each other. And they had fun together, <clears throat> and because of. Uh, noble birth and, and the way things were going politically and, and the way marriages were back then, it just wasn't to be. And they, they, they were, they were apart, but together and they, they just loved each other until the day they died. So to me, that, that's, that kind of shit's amazing. And guys that don't get that and uh, that are stuck in a binary thinking, I feel very sorry for them uh -huh. that they don't have this or not have cultivated this or, you know, Oh, everything, I'm going to break everything down. It's a goddamn chemical. Yeah, well, go ahead and explain music to me, asshole. And what do I mean by that? That one piece of music that gives you goosebumps or motivates you or charges you. You go fucking explain that to me. You can't. You cannot. Science cannot fucking explain that. And that I like that I get that. And I like that I use that in my daily comport, comporting myself when I'm out and about in the world. So that that's 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 what you get in here. It's like that that music, that that life music that you don't know why, but it is. So that's why this book is really good. It's one of those, even though I'm half, only halfway through it. And thank you, Rob, for recommending it. I had no idea this book existed. Well, it was one of those that when I got home from the village by the sea, 
And, you know, I got back and saw my girls and fucked around with them for a while and did my thing. And then it was like, you know, I need to get a couple of books because, you know, you can never have too many of them things. Absolutely. And so I was looking at the pictures that you had, you know, uh, that I you had allowed me to so graciously rape from your book. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking at them. Like, yeah, I'm gonna order that, and I'm gonna order that, and I'm gonna order that. So I get the first order. You know, there it goes. Okay, just gotta sit around and wait for Amazon to show up. But then, as a recommendation, based off of I want to say it was off of Casanova, was this one. And I'm like, wait, what's this? And so I had to look at it, you know, and so I'm kind of, you know, reading a little bit of the synopsis and whatnot. And I wasn't sure. I was like, I don't know. You know, I've, I've gotten some pretty bad re recommends from, you know, Amazon, from people that it's like, eh, I don't know. But I thought, you know what? Fuck it. Let's try it out. And I got it and I read like the first couple of chapters mm. and I was like, oh, wow. This is actually really good. It's high level. It's it's very surface level stuff. We're not drilling down deep here. There's no deep dark rabbit hole of discovery here, guys. There's not. But as a That's as a easy. fun read, as a as a kind of it's it's enlightening in its own way. And it, it's like I said, I like her take where she kind of dispels a lot of the fictional crap, mm -hmm. and then starts talking about people both past and present who are doing it in real time exactly and these are not your you know this isn't mystery and neil strauss and you know and all these other dickheads you know about this like i said this <coughs> is you no know, this is tom the dentist you know these are yeah. just random dudes but she's talking about real life men who she was able to sit down and have a conversation with and and a lot of it, you, you know, a lot of it I've read so far. There's parts of where I'm like, oh yeah, I've yeah, oh, yeah, I get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've I've yeah. read this in other, <clears throat> but yeah. it's good. And I thought of you, Vince, and that's why I was like, dude, you need to check this out. Because yeah, I appreciate it. This is appreciate it. Absolutely, and it, it speaks to a lot of stuff that I do and stuff that I'm like, oh, I can, I could, I could, I can, I can do that more. Yeah, or, or add can, you know, this can, into the repertoire. Exactly, because she goes into studies about what women like with men. Like, for instance, in studies, women show distinct preferences in men's gait. They favor a long, light step, swing torso, and assertive arm swing. Rhett Butler rivets Scarlet with his lithe Indian-like walk. And the young officer of A Hero of Our Time has a careless, lazy stroll that captivates bells at a Caucasus, Caucasus resort. Writer Catherine Mansfield recalled being spellbound by a stranger's walk. I watched the complete rhythmic movement, the absolute self-confidence, the beauty of his body, and felt the excitement which is everlasting. This is a woman writing this about what she likes in a man's walk. Yep. Something Just like that. Walk. His walk, uh, a man's, uh, uh, your voice against a man's skin. <clears throat> so it gets it gets the skin um it's it's amazing a woman a woman's uh a woman's breath on your skin it talks about the this touch of scent uh, of of uh, of scent and touch and flavor and food as far as like food priming there's a there's a there's a reason behind that's like uh something about primal feeding or supportive feeding or something feeding i forget <clears throat> but the food before uh, the dinner and the supper before sex is you know, it's priming all your senses both male and female to get to that 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 rapturous end or dessert if you will which is why i like wine when i'm with my girls fair enough well and to go back to your where you've mentioned it mo uh, you know multiple times you've mentioned it when we were talking about the alabaster girl it's kind of a common theme with you <clears throat> When you talk about, you know, the joy de vivre type of thing, mm. okay, the, the, that, the joy of life. Okay, so here's yes. some things that I, I found when they talked about Elan, you know, which is living life with gusto. And it said, you know, these are just some of the things I highlighted that he, whoever he is, Paul, 
that's who it is. So there's this dude named Paul. He's a guy that's alive right now. This isn't Casanova. This isn't Don Juan. This isn't some guy from back in the 1300s. This is a dude today. Paul blew her away with his surging elan and made her laugh so hard she ached. The most alive man in the room, Paul infected everyone with his vitality. Joy DeVere packs huge sexual charisma. And as Mae West quipped, it's not the men in my life, it's the life in my men. Exuberant That's what Aaron Clary quotes. always says. Yeah, exactly. He <laughs> likes a lot of life in his men too. Exuberance and eros are crosswired in our brains. And as an aphrodisiac, gusto cannot be beat. Okay, these are things that I picked up because they're true. Okay, they're just things that I've noticed, you know, exuberant vitality, gaiety, many sided zest for life. And this is just like one section, a couple of paragraphs of one chapter. Right. You know, he loved every aspect of life and made every aspect of life lovable. Okay, passion within passion, passion. Very aggressive, firm, but sincere. Ladies' men aren't slow-pulsed, impassive islands of calm and, and zen indifference. They're not stoics. They are fire on all cylinders, emotional intensity, exceptional personal force. I was neither tender nor gallant nor pathetic. I was passionate. And that mm -hmm. is Casanova. Yeah. Okay. These are oh, just yeah. little things that, you know, that I, I was picking up as I was going along because I was, when I started reading it, it was like, I was highlighting some of the myth busts that she was doing because I see a lot of guys, you know, putting out the tropes, you know, that it's like, ah, and she's doing some myth, myth busting here. And then she goes into some other things where I'm like, okay, I get it. I understand this without having to break it down to the molecular level you know it's like she chunks it up to a level that i understand that works best for me and so when i see things like zest for life when i see intensity of passion i understand for me what that means and i've had women tell me that to me without me fishing for it or looking for it they're just like dude you are intense you know and it and it's and I'm not like, what do you mean? What do you mean I'm intense? What do you mean? I know what they mean. And I just all I do is just kind of smile at them and just go, You haven't seen anything yet. You know? And that's before sex. Yep. That's I and I'll pat myself on the back on one of the one of the most frequent words used to describe me since my twenties was intense. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. I'm like, Same here. Yeah, I am. Yep. Like I, there are certain yep. things I, I'll go all in on and I'll fucking passion that shit into the ground. It, it's a double-edged sword, though, because when I go in with a woman, I have a tendency to do that, or many women, and then I get bored very quickly. I've run into the same thing. Yeah, it's like, oh, fuck. So I, what, I, what I've been doing lately this past, I'd say the past maybe five years, and I've talked about not setting a precedent because if you go all in with a woman, ah, you set a precedent. He does this shit all the time. We go here all the time. He so does and says and blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden you're like, you, you start to get burned out because you've, it's almost like you've used her up and you've used yourself up in this, this flame of desire. And it's and hey, consumed you burn both. out. You don't fade away. Exactly. Right. It's consumed both of you. So I, I'm metering out my time and my attention and I'm not doing anything twice in a row. And I make sure I don't set a precedent. So she can't say, well, you did this or we used to do that. It's like every, every, every encounter is something new. Uh -huh. So that keeps it fresh for me. I don't text all the time. I, I, I don't make plans all the time. There's a, each girl gets maybe one day a week, if that. And it works out tremendously and there's longevity now to these passionate desirous encounters for both of us 
Nice. Don't set it. Yeah. Don't set a pre. And I had, that's something I had to learn. I, I fucked that up constantly and kept tripping. I'm like the common denominator here with this bullshit is me. Cause I'm, these women are having a great fucking time and I'm having a great time. And then it's like, I got to go on to the next thing to have a great time with it's the same with my books. Like Rob has seen all the books I have. And then the book, the, the book, uh, like I was saying earlier, the people have come in later, I've thrown out, I've thrown out my TV so I can concentrate on finishing the books that I haven't gotten through or halfway through, which is probably about 120 last count. Jesus. Yeah. And just, I want to get through those this year and I want to finish my writing and then have fun with my girls. Right. That's all I'm doing for this year. No TV. If I want to reward myself with a movie or something, I can do it on my phone. That's fine. Or I'll go to the, go to one of my girls' houses. That that's cool. <clears throat> but no TV. It's gone. Fucking gone. And I've never really watched TV. I don't have cable. But like I said, I have like uh, my uh, my Bluetooth, the uh, Bluetooth, my Blu-ray player, and my VCR hooked up to the had it hooked up to the TV. And then I would have my Amazon Prime account via Fire Stick. Well, the Fire Stick is sitting in a drawer. The TV's in the fucking trash. And the uh, the VCR and the the Blu-ray player are collecting dust. Yay! There we go. So I can concentrate on this, thing, but not 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 setting a precedent. Both in my private life, as far as uh, you know, other things with work and everything, and also with my girls. <clears throat> so no, that's good. You know that. Hey, this is hey guys. What is this called? This is you know guys swapping notes. Exactly. Okay, that's, that's why this this, this this I think this series is good. It is. And and I like it for the fact that, you know, this isn't red meat and you know, the the latest dopamine hit. And no. it's and for at least for me, it's not seduction one oh one or red pill one oh one because I get no. it and those things matter and, and I get it, but I'm I'm past that. I was about to say we're done with that shit. Yeah, it's like I, you know, there's guys that, hey, dude, you know, you should come on my show. And I'm like, oh, you're, you know, you're, I'm sure you're doing a great thing, but you're basically more or less rehashing Rolo, but you're giving him credit, which I give you credit for the fact that you're not trying to rip him off. But I've already talked about all that and I don't care. You know, I'm, I'm past that point. I want to go do something else now. Exactly. And so that's why when you brought up, you know, hey, let's do this. That's where I was like, yeah. Where if you're like, hey, let's, you know, talk about the the nine iron rules of Tomasi, it'd be like, eh, I've already read it. You've read it. And they're great. Yeah. But I've already been there. I don't I don't yeah. need to rehash that. I, I don't need to go backwards. I want to go further forwards. Exactly. And that's why, you know, <clears throat> reading like Zan, reading Swoon, um, <laughs> I'm not going to say for, hey, next month, let's talk about the memoirs of Casanova because I haven't even cracked that Bible open yet. <laughs> this thing is huge. We will do that, though. We'll, what we will do is, because I have the the uh, the books that are broken down into two books, two volumes per... Not me. You got... I you, have the <laughs> entire thing in one book. Fine glass. That, it's funny. I was going to buy and that one. But you, teeny fucking font. Oh, that, my god that was one of the main complaints oh. about that like everyone's like I, it's too the font's too small and i need oh, I a fucking magnifying need glass. glass yeah i need reading glasses for this thing but i, I want to i want a picture of you rob with your oh. cat in your lap and that book and you and reading glasses and a Jesus cigar <laughs> well considering there is there is 1140 pages in this book and it's this teeny tiny font this isn't like you know rome new roman 10 no this is like new roman 4 i'm serious dude this is so teeny that i'm just like dude i'm gonna need fucking reading glasses for this thing and there's 1140 pages of it this thing is bigger than the holy bible it's it's thicker it's longer i'm just like holy shit and, you know, Vince is like, hey, in a month, let's talk about that. I'm going to be like, yeah, Vince, go fuck yourself. You know, because this is going to take me a while to read this thing. Part of All it right, even so. intimidates me because it is so thick. I mean, look at this. <clears throat> look how fucking thick this thing is. All right. All right. I'll it's tell you guys. Um, huge. You can get the go to. Uh, and this is I'm going to give you my secret place where I get all my pulp and my old books and stuff. Um, magazines and everything. Abe Books. All one word, A-B-E, books.com. And you can get this where I got mine. Uh, this is the uh, volume volume one and two. 
They, they look like this. They all have the same photo. And they're probably going to be bigger font too. And then they 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 complete. They'll complete a photo. They'll complete a woman. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. <clears throat> on the spine, That's and each font. one bigger exactly. Font. And yep. and this one is between the two volumes. It's two hundred. No, it's three. Three hundred six pages. Okay, so between the two. two and, you know, so we're talking 600 pages, right? Those for, for, two for volumes, volumes, yeah, those two <clears> volumes Vince was just holding is about just a barely over half. Yeah. The, the whole, you know, the whole book that I've got. And it's just like, holy shit. So, yeah. Abe, Abe books, Bull Rush, you turpentine drinking motherfucker. All one word. I'll put it. I'll put it in the. Uh, I love you, brother. I'll put it. Put I know you're. you're I'll put it in, in the chat for you. And also, this is by Frank Harris. This is volume two. <clears throat> My life and loves. All the all the books are titled that, and I believe there are at least three. There might be four. Jesus. But these are good because it's 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 autobiography about him and his women and his, and his travels and his jobs and his women and his jobs and his women. <clears throat> so Abe books. Dot com. I also get my dude. My I, can already, I can hear the guys clicking on their fucking keyboards. I can already hear them. You know, yeah. geek, he's over there going, "I'm there now." He I he's got one him. hand down his pants and one he's hand on the keyboard. <laughs> he's clicking by now. Me, books <laughs> It's fuck. Oh, you get a nerd burn boner on that shit. I mean, I can. Mm -hmm. I get all my sleaze pulps there. I get my my Betty Page stuff. Um. Um. Oh, it's fucking fantastic. So good. All my old detective and uh, all my pulps. You know, Mike Hammer. I love it. I Mickey love Spillane. It. Yeah, yeah. But I, you can get all the Casanova. And these these were like 14 bucks a piece, if that, including shipping. Damn, son. <clears throat> yeah. This I got on Amazon. You can you can find the Frank Harris on yeah, eBooks. books. they're on. They're on. He's on yeah, there. It's on but uh, you get all that shit. But yeah, I've I've decided going forward from it was really the the germination, if you will, the seed was probably planted over a year ago. But it was really it really came home for me when I went out to your place after we did the Ocean City mm -hmm. and I saw your bookshelves. And like I said to you backstage, you know. You you can know a person based on what they read. You can have a pretty good idea of a person based on what they read. And you're very eclectic. You have a lot of interests. Mm -hmm. And probably two-thirds of them, I'm just like, oh, that's cool, or eh, whatever. You know, that I'm like, yeah, I'm not taking pictures of this bookshelf because I don't care. You know, nothing against the 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 subject. That's Vince's subject, but it's not mine. And then there's some that I'm like, ooh. Some of it I have, some of it I have an interest in, but not to the level Vince does. And then there's some that I'm like, well, hello. And that's where I started snapping photos because I'm just looking at these biographies, autobiographies, and I'm just like, ah, Vince studies at the feet of masters. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, you can too. You know, everybody that knows Vince or knows of Vince knows that he's kind of like the, he's in a whole nother level of degeneracy than most of us. And that's not a bad thing. The, I, like I said in an episode on Let Him Burn a few weeks ago, I was like, I want to grow up and be like Vince. Okay, <laughs> I do. You know, Vince is only a couple years older than me and I'm just like, wow, I've got so much to learn. But at the same time, I know where he and I diverge when it comes to our interests, when it comes to women, BDSM, all that. I know where we diverge. It doesn't mean that Vince can't teach me anything because he can and he has. But I'm also looking at what does <clears throat> Vince study? And it's like, well, fuck, he's reading about Frank Harris. He's reading about fucking Desaad, which that one was something he and I already had in common that I'm like, ah, <clears throat> Odd. Yeah, yeah, Desaad. Okay, yeah, that that particular book that the autobiography, the new autobiography That's that I we, we, we that I that I'd shown you, um, I posted that back on my Dennis Malone Instagram account like three or four years ago. <clears throat> I've had that one 
for a, for while. a while. Yeah, yeah. And, but and I've, I've very dog-eared, guys. It's very. It's his his copy is very worn. Yep. He's read it more than once, obviously. But I'm yep. just. But I'm seeing, you know, that kind of made me pause when I saw that, oh, we have an affinity for the same thing when it comes to that, at least. Oh, yeah. We're definitely brothers from another mother. Yeah. But then when I'm looking at, you know, Casanova, Frank Harris, it's like these are honest to God living human beings. These aren't James Bond caricatures that are an amalgam of, you know, of several different guys. And so that's where I'm like, okay, the next level, if you will. Mm -hmm. for me is i want to read from these guys their their own words there you go that's about this is very good this is very very good uh, a couple people on twitter suggested this i think like four three four years ago um and i've read this twice this is this is fantastic i wish they'd make this into a documentary it's so good <clears throat> okay. see and i've even got a couple of the biographies if you will of actual uh pickup artists you know i've i mean everyone has i'm sure they've heard of the game that neil strauss wrote about mystery which ultimately culminated into a book called the mystery method there's that one but then there's stuff that nick krauser has wrote that it's not just the how-to guides which they're okay but they're to me they're they're too molecular. Hmm. It's like, wow, he really breaks it down into minutia. You know, he's getting into very fine detail, which is, it's overwhelming to me. It's like, man, you're, you know, I get it and I understand it and I appreciate it, but it's overwhelming. It's like, I, I don't need this level of detail. I just need the general idea. But I've got some of his autobiographical stuff. There's a couple other pickup artist type of guys that I've got some of their biography stuff. And sure, some of it's probably a bit inflated, a bit puffed up. Because we all, you know, any, any biographer is going to write about their good shit and diminish their bad shit. And so you got to take it to, with a certain grain of salt to a certain degree. But I've got some more of the contemporary, more modern stuff, but finding some of this older stuff too. Yeah. It's like these are the guys I want to know about because they're not they're not writing an eleven hundred page book about whammy ain't shit. Right. Or here's the seven keys to being alpha. You know, they're not if, if they weren't if they, what, women weren't shit, you wouldn't be so concerned about them, whether it's positive or negative. Right. It's, 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 you're, you're, you're fucking, you're not fooling anybody with that shit. That's a huge cope because you don't know what to do to get them. Or if you do get them, you don't know what to do to continue having them. And even and I've you, been guilty of that one. <clears throat> oh, yeah. It goes it's, back it, to what you were saying younger. earlier about, uh, about kind of, you know, you have to kind of pull back a little bit that you don't just yeah. fucking go balls to the wall because I've done that. And I know exactly what you're talking about. You're like, okay. You do this and it's way intense. And well, now you got to one up it. Otherwise, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You yeah. Constantly <laughs> yourself to the point you burn out or the chicks finally are like, when you're just like, nah, babe, I just want to Netflix and chill tonight, man. You know, Christ almighty. I'm, I, I, I've, I've sweated off 20 pounds. Can, can we just have a casual night? <laughs> exactly. That's, you know, so I get it. You know, it is the art of push pull or as in neuro linguistic programming terms, NLP terms, it's called pacing and leading. Okay. Which when I hear about push pull, you know, you guys all, you know, that love jargon, you know, push pull. Yeah, I know. Dude, all that is is NLP terms for pacing and leading. That's all that is. And yep. that's something I learned back in the 90s. But I'm like, oh, pacing and leading. This was before push-pull ever became a thing. Yeah. It's like, oh, you're talking about that or fractionation. That's another fun buzzword. It's like, oh, fractionation. Yeah, that's push-pull, which is pacing and leading. Okay, I got you. Yeah, cool. So, yeah. That's true. <clears throat> I'll have to check that out, Geeky. Nice. I seeing a lot of, I, th that was very prolific in the 40s and 50s, even into the 60s. And then with the rise of uh, women's movements and civil rights, things changed a little bit. Well, they changed a lot, actually. But 
but did they really? Well, they changed uh, in the media as far as it, how things are portrayed. It doesn't mean it, it's portrayed in, in real life, but it's, it's, it's how they wanted this. They wanted real life to be seen, not how actually real life was. There's a huge difference. There's what reality is, and there's what reality is portrayed in the media and online. <clears throat> there's another. Um, she photographed Betty Page uh, when she was in Florida. Uh, Bunny Yeager. Check out Bunny Yeager's work. Um, her her volumes of the, like the law. I have a couple of the like the lost photographs of Betty Page. There's like coffee table books, picture books. They're very good. And she does the calendars. Uh, I think it's. Uh, I want to say it's. She does the forties and the fifties and the sixties. Maybe the maybe the. I don't think the thirties. 40s, 50s, and 60s, I think. But anyway, they could come in two volumes. The one I'm thinking of is 50s and 60s. <clears throat> so th those are cool. Pinup girls are great. In fact, I've got there's Betty Page up here in the calendar. So it's kind of hard to see. It's black and white. She's oh, there she is. They're all yeah. They're all bar. They're all bar scenes. Her in front of the bar, and, and she's naked in them. Oh, and this is back. This is back when taking photographs of 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 women naked in in semi public areas, even in in, in um, photograph clubs, was a no no. You'd go to jail. <clears throat> so, like, literally, have your. In fact, they were in a park. In is is either, I want to say New York, or in New Jersey somewhere. I think it was in New, Northern New Jersey. They were in a park. And they were taking naked photographs and the cops came along because someone complained. And the, one of the cops was essentially like, Oh, I hear you're taking indecent photos and Betty page with hands on her hips. She's like, well, I'm, I, I'm not indecent. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> this is not indecent at all. So what they would do was the cops would make the photographers take all their, their, uh, they would, they would take all their, their, uh, their negatives, their camera spools, the, the spools of film. I guarantee you they fucking developed them and was jacking off to them. But one guy, one guy was very enterprising. He did something with the counter and then showed the cop and said, look, this is a fresh, this is a fresh uh, film. I haven't taken anything. Don't open it. You're going to, you're going to ruin it. And he said, okay. But there was a full roll of naked photographs of Betty Page on it. So he, uh, he released those, I think in a, compilation not too long ago and some remain private as well there's a lot of private collectors that will not release anything publicly but yeah you could go to jail for doing that now it's just like eh, whatever so <laughs> i mean you don't want to go to a national park and you know strap women to a tree and and, and take photos of them uh, ask me how i know that can get you in trouble uh but uh, you have to be very circumspect with that stuff you got to find places that are uh off the beaten path, which I'll be doing on April 5th. I gotta let Rob know. <laughs> hey, Rob's yeah. gonna be my Rob's yeah. gonna be my, my backup. I'm buddy. gonna be your point of you know breaking case of emergency. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No shit. Hey, not to change the subject, but I kind of want to veer off the path just for a second. Sure. So this just happened 16 minutes ago, and you can thank Bull Rush for this. He tags me, of course, the motherfucker, but this one at least, he's on to something here, and I want to expand on this. He tweeted NGMI, and he tags me, of course, so it shows up on Twitter. So, you know, he's, he's stirring the water of the slumbering one here because he likes to do that. Hmm. And normally I just ignore him. You know, normally I just you know, like it and move on, and that's pat him on the head, and here's a crayon, go eat it. Go away, boy. You bother me. Well, boy, you bother me. Now, go away, boy. You bother me. <laughs> you know, but this one actually. Fucking WC Fields. Yeah, no shit. But this one actually, yeah, because there's a guy and he's like cocaine and orgies at a Texas Renaissance Festival. Hmm. And he goes on, you know, the elites and power corrupt dictators, blah, blah, blah. You know, he goes on. and But the part that caught me, hmm. and it wasn't necessarily the cocaine and orgies, even though the orgy part caught me. <laughs> it was the Renaissance <laughs> Festival. 
Renaissance okay. Festival. It's the Renaissance Festival. And just the fact that it's the Texas one. I mean, I get it for, I get it where, you know, apparently this guy must be somewhere in the vicinity in Bulls, obviously, somewhere in Texas. Yeah. But what it got me thinking of, okay, we have a, a, a Renaissance Festival in Utah. It's it's called the Ren Fair. They've, you know, mm. we, we got to be, you know, we, we got to shorten it up. It's the Ren Fair. But really, it's the Renaissance Fair. You know, it's the mm. Renaissance Festival. It's in Utah. We have two of them. There's a big one, and then there's a smaller one. Either way, it doesn't matter. Here's one thing I've learned. And Vince, you'll appreciate this. You'll understand this. Okay. Renaissance festivals are carnivals. They just happen to be carnivals that involve dressing up in a certain theme, such as knights and maidens and pirates and all that shit. Okay. That's what it is. Okay. The Renaissance Festival, yes, it's LARPing. Okay. But it's a carnival with large turkey legs. Large turkey legs and maidens showing bosoms and guys swaggering around drinking mead. Real mead, not you know, not my <clears throat> my store bought watered down piss water, as Bull would call it. Real mead. Mm. Okay, one thing I've learned over the years, and there's literature on this. This is the part you'd appreciate, Vince. Do you remember back in the day when, like, carnivals, the carny atmosphere, like back in the 20s and 30s, when that was a thing? Barnum and Here, Bailey. Yeah. Yes. Okay, Barnum and Bailey. Yep. Okay. When carnies, they'd come rolling into town and they'd set up the Ferris wheel and they had elephants and tigers and lions, oh my, and all that stuff. And they had rigged games and everybody knew it was bullshit and they had fake psychics and sword eaters and fire breathers and all that shit. Okay, but the town would come out and they would participate. And then the town folks would take their kids home and most of the town folks you know, were Puritans and... That was fun, even though we lost a few dollars because this is back in, you know, like the Great Depression, guys. So a few dollars was a lot of money. But they would lose some money and they'd get a few cheap trinkets or whatever. And, a, a, you know, a day or two later, the carny would pack up and roll on to the next town, a bunch of gypsy nomads. Here's the point. Okay. The Ren Fest is just like the carnies of old. They're just a little more, you know, they have a new veneer, you know, we, we got some new, new buzzwords, but otherwise the people, and that's the point, the people yeah. that don't go there and show up and go, Hey, I'm a, I'm a peak fatherhood patriarch. And let's take my, let's take little Johnny to the fucking Ren fair. No, not those guys. I'm not talking about the people who come to the carnival who come to the Ren Fair. I'm talking about the people who put on the Ren Fair. The actors, the actresses, the people who set it up, the people who pour and make the mead, okay? The actual Ren Fest volunteers, the, the Ren Fest participants, the workers. Yes, the workers. they're the carnies, okay? Those are my people, Okay, because just like I've done with you, Vince, with Masculine Geek, and I've done it a little bit with Jack on Red Evening, and I do it all the time with Nick and Bull on uh, Let Them Burn, you have a pregame show or a pre-show, and you have a post-show, and then you have the show, just like we're doing now. We have the show. Here's what the audience gets to see. They don't ever get to see the pregame. They don't get to see the post-show. Okay, because that's only for the carnies. Okay, some of the most debaucherous fucking crazy motherfuckers I've ever met mm -hmm. are the carnies. It's the workers. And yeah, they put on the show for the kids and they blow balloons and bubble smoke and all this other bullshit. And, and all the kids, hey, and dad's going, I'm the patriarch, man. And look at me out here with my kids. Let me get a selfie to put up on my shed fucking dot com site. Okay. They're never invited to the after show when there is a real bonfire and there's actual the good mead, the good mead, which never is sold to the public. The mead makers save that batch for the after show. 
for the workers. After party is a real party. That's where it's really at. That's where you find out that, oh, hey, do you guys remember a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away when I wrote about <laughs> Kitten, my voodoo Wiccan sex goddess priestess chick that was fucking nuts? What, what do you think she did? She's a fucking carny. Okay. My belly dancer is a carny. She's like, hey, do you want to go to Renfest with me? And I'm like, hello. Why, Absolutely. yes, yes, I do. I'll even fucking slap some fucking war paint on my face and go as a Viking or something. I don't care. And go. I don't care about the day events. I don't care about what the <clears throat> come and see. Oh, look, we got jousters and we've got, you know, guys reciting Hamlet. This is great. I'm like, I want to be around for the bonfire after. Yeah. Because that's where the degeneracy and the debauchery is. That's when you find out these women and men worship the pagan gods of old. And it's like, yeah. Okay. Yep. You don't ever see that when you're the, the shed patriarch, trad masculine alpha 2.0 guy that laments about women aren't just what they were back in the good old 50s. And I'm seeing, you know, going back to Bull's tweet here. Like I said, this guy's going, you know, cocaine and orgies at a Texas Renaissance festival. And I'm like, yep, this guy just outed himself to me. He will never, ever be invited to the bonfire at night. Yeah, they're fun. He will, he will never be a part of that secret society because yeah. he's too busy LARPing about his morality. And you know, it's not just the Renaissance fairs; it's also oh, it's the those all, haunted house fairs that they put on in, in October. I, I've been to I've been to quite a few of those, and they're fun. I'm like, holy shit, this is great! Yes, <clears throat> they're all carnies, dude. That's what I'm yeah. saying. They're all carnies, dude. Yeah. When I used to run with an MC, okay, those motherfuckers. I don't care what anyone says; they're badasses in their own way, and they're great people too. They'll give you the shirt off their backs. But they're carnies on motorcycles. Yeah, right. Because they'll they'll do a run and they'll do a toys for tot. And look at us, we're playing Santa and we're giving these these homeless, helpless kids some stuff because mom couldn't get it for them and and whatever, you know, they 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 put on the public show. But then there's the the bonfire after it's over. And it's like, oh, man. And, you, you know, guys talk about, you know, I saw this video clip from Sturgis. And I'm like, dude, that, was, that wasn't that was even a warm-up. That little tiny bit of titties and ass that you saw, that was just some chick who decided, hey, look at my tits. And somebody snapped a photo or took a video. You know, some normie took a picture or took a <clears> shot. <throat> it's a five-second yeah. that they allowed for. It's like, until you've been in the club. And then you realize, oh shit, we're all just a bunch of carnies, and and it's hedonism and it's heathenry and it's it's fucking fantastic. And most people will ever never ever know it because they're they're larping about their morality. And it's like, wow, you dumb motherfuckers. All right, fine, fuck it. More for me. Well, most people would rather talk about shit than actually do it. Uh -huh. So. Oh, absolutely. That's one of the reasons why I always show proof of what I'm doing. Well, and I get it. You like to show receipts. Yep. And, and, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. I've had guys come at me, show receipts, and I'm like, yeah, go fuck yourself. I, well, I, I have also have a voyeuristic. Uh, and I realize that. And I yeah. do to a lesser degree. I do too. Yeah. But mostly I have, an, an, <clears throat> I have a, a don't tell me what to do streak is probably my Oh, if someone's coming, yeah, I'd be like, no, go fuck yourself. Oh, post physique, you know, post receipts. You know, who are you? You're some dickhead on the internet. Go fuck yourself. You know, it's like guys that understand and know what's up. They know that, oh, shit, Rob's not joking around. He knows what he's talking about. Just mm -hmm. like carnies. It's like in order to understand that atmosphere, the bonfire after the show, you have to be a part of the show. And if you're not part of the show, then you'll never know. You're just the guy LARPing in your shed, talking about how great it is to be a dad, and you take your kid to the Ren Festival, and you stand next to the guy who's got a horse, and he's got a bow and arrow, and you're like putting your kid on the horse going, yeah, look at me, I'm a dad. <clears throat> yet you don't realize the guy that's got the bow is having degenerate shit going on at the bonfire at 10 o'clock at night when the show's over. You have no idea what's going on in the background.
Exactly. But that's do. the part I love. It is that I want to be a part of the background. And so mm -hmm. when she's like, hey, I'm going to be dancing at the <clears throat> fair. Do you want to come? And I'm like, Jesus Christ, do you have to ask me twice? And she's like, no. well, I kind of figured that was your thing. And I'm like, dude, it's not my thing. That's my life. Are you kidding me? So, yeah, I'll be at the Ren Fair, both rooting her on and sitting there. <clears throat> and let the kiddies go. Oh, look, a Viking mom. I want to stand next to the Viking. Sure, kid, come here. You know, right. get your dad over here and let him take a selfie and put it on, you know, the, 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 the patriarchal alpha dot. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And I'll stand there next to him and look all mean and alpha with him. But then it's like, dude, you have no idea what's coming here in about three hours when the sun goes down and we're all done play acting for the day real. and we drink real mead, not the shit they sell you for overinflated prices. We're going to drink real mead and we're going to sing songs to Odin and Valhalla for real, you right. know, and the women are going to be naked <clears throat> dancing around the bonfire. You, you guys have no fucking clue. Yeah, that's the, the so I had to, I had to make my rant here. I had to be brief because Bull had to tag me yeah. in that shit. It's all Boris's fault. That it is. It kind really is. This, this rant <clears throat> me playing TJ is all Bull's fault. Exactly. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 but getting back. Do you, you want to come? I see what she did there. Dude. That's right. You want to come? Of course I want to come, that. bitch. Yeah. But gentlemen, oh. go out and pick this up. You will not be disappointed. It's good stuff. Um, I will finish it. Like I said, I'm about halfway through. I'm on chapter four, which is page uh, 134. And there's 256 pages or something or so. So halfway through. <clears throat> there's some photos of some real people in here as well. Musicians and artists and writers and playboys and whatnot. Uh, but this one is good, too. <clears throat> um, the last playboy. Porfirio Ruborosta. It was in the uh, 50s, 40s and 50s. There's also a race car driver. He liked to drive race cars. He was dating actresses, artists, models, all kinds of shit. He was in politics for a while. I think he was a <clears throat> ambassador of the United States. I want to say, where is he? He's from uh, South America somewhere, and I forget. It's been a while. It's been four years since I've read it. Almost four years. Anyway, pick that up. You'll enjoy it. And obviously, go to A Books and get all the... Uh, this is volume one and two of History of My Life by Cas uh, Giacomo Casanova. Um, I'm reading it again, and I'm about a fourth of the way through the first book. So <laughs> it's so good, but it's, it's a lot. But Rob and I, once we do book one, we'll talk about book one. We'll do each book and talk about how it... In we're always men of action, so we read a lot, and God knows I read a lot. Rob knows, but you also have to do, and that is actually part of what she talked about in here. What makes a great seducer is is the action, um, even intellectually, the action involved behind a, an intellectual man. Uh, if I can find it. I'll have to make a note next time. But anyway. Do, 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 do. Well, I'm, I'm kind of scrolling back through the chat because obviously when I went <laughs> on my tirade, I forgot everybody but you. And Bull, right. because it's his fault. But right. um, there's some things where Bull says, God damn Neo Puritan. <clears throat> and all yeah. I can say to that is, dude, seriously, these are the people that have no idea how to really have fun. Right. They really don't, you know, as a whole. The, I don't care what their denomination is, whether they're secular <laughs> and they're feminist or they're, they're Methodist or Baptist or Catholic, you know, which I can't throw a lot of shade at Catholics. Catholics actually know how to have fun because they can say a Hail Mary and they're, they're forgiven. But, you know, the Methodist and the Baptist, you know, and the Mormons, that's it. You're you're condemned forever. Same with Islam. It's like they're fun suckers. You know, they suck the fun out of everything. And that's where I'm just like, yeah, you, you fuckers go away. Right. And that's why I'll, I just <clears throat> the sermonizing 
in whatever form it is, I just compare it to the the opposite. It's the the antithesis. It's the bonfire after the event. That I'm like, uh, yeah, you <clears throat> find me at the bonfire. Thanks. Right. I found uh, something. Oh shit. Okay. Or it, it it speaks to what a masculine geek is, and also talks to speaks to what um, Zen Perrin talks about in Alabaster Girl with a woman. Uh, she's it's like she has two ribbons in her hand. And in one ribbon, she mm. has the nice guy and the other ribbon has the bad boy. And she has to decide when she's about to get into a long-term relationship. However, but a masculine geek embodies this or he attempts to. That's what he, Although some women do fancy wild and wicked reprobates, especially for flings, a bigger turn on are men who scramble the good bad categories and are nice with spice. Unalloyed virtue or the appearance of it has zero allure. <laughs> yep. Ladies, men stir it up. Morally mixed and inclined to bend rules, they are fundamentally decent and know the secret of the oldest conundrum how to make goodness charming. In, study, in studies, women seem to be of two minds about virtuous partners. On the one hand, says re, say researchers, they want a nice guy with that old fashioned quality integrity. On the other, they want a fun, bold bad boy. The problem is in the polarized choice, writes Edgar Horgan in a Harvard University paper. After reviewing the literature, he concludes that women desire a combination of both, niceness commingled with deviltry and served up seductively. Essence of being a masculine geek, as we've said all along. Or, so, you know, in Rollo speak, women want a guy that has options. They want a guy that can fuck other women but chooses not to. Yeah. And 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 they know it. It's it's a, a more a moralistic women want. Yeah, it's it's like that. It's like I guess it's a cross between to put it in comic book for you comic book nerds. It's a cross between um, Tony Stark, Iron Man, and Captain America. It's that uh, that dichotomy there. You got to be both. You got to be a mixture of the both, or, or it's not going to be as successful as you think. Right. Well, and, and to go with that, where it is such a fine line and it, it can be so exhausting. It comes back to something I've said for a long time. What do you want? Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, if you want to be the virtuous, chivalrous dude, that's fine. But all I can say to that is come back to me in a year and tell me how that's working out for you. Or how is that working out for you now? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not for nothing. Yeah, you know, yeah. how's that working <clears throat> for you? Because most guys I've met that that's the path they chose. It, 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 that path leads to suffering and frustration. Mm -hmm. And I refuse to do it. It's like, no. And so while I try to embody a little bit of both, uh, I find the virtuous side a bit more tiresome. And so I just tend to lean more heavy on the debauchery side. And yeah, that kind of can shorten the lifespan of a relationship. And I'm okay with that because <coughs> at least I know, mm -hmm. but at least they know what they're getting that it's like, oh, this guy's a fucking wild dog. You know, it's like, yeah, he, I'm not going to marry yeah, they, him. They're going well, to want, want you even, they're going to want you even more at that point. Well, at least for the short term. Yeah, you know, and by short term, you know, <clears throat> short term to me it is like a year, guys. It really is. Yeah. You well, know, me and the belly dancer, we've been seeing each other almost eight months now. Yeah. However, and that's just how it is. Yeah. However, that could be stretched out by not setting a precedent there and, you and, go. and, and mm -hmm. metering out your time and attention. <clears throat> I'll give you a for instance. This uh... real quick, but while you do give me a for instance, put Geeky's nah. latest comment up. Throw it up oh, I did. You missed it. I, I, I guess. You I, son I, of a. I'll do it again. That's <clears> great. <throat> Playboy Scout. Yes. Right. I love it. Good, good mashing of words together. I love it. <clears throat> Playboy Scout. Yes. Anyway, you were saying Vince. Yeah, I and I've posted this on the masculine geek. I know a lot of you guys have uh, sent me um, Instagram uh, join requests or uh, follow requests the masculine geek life instagram that's semi x-rated and that follows along my textual and video and photo bondage life with my girls and you only get that if you're a masculine geek that life subscriber so 
Stop asking me. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, let me see if I can find this. I posted that up on there, so I'll release it here. Do, 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 do. Okay. This is this crazy Russian chick. She was just, I, I, I told you about this when we were on our talk. Oh, yeah, Russia. dude. You, she <clears throat> is bona fide nuts, man. You've seen her photos, though. It's like, I wow. Saw, it's yeah, a, she's she's yeah. smoking, dude. She's a smoke show. <clears throat> and yeah, she is fucking insane. But here, here is the, the power of saying no. Whether I had shit to do or not doesn't matter. You have to do this. So she's blowing up my phone with these walls of text. And she sends me a photo because she lives by the beach on my walk. Wow. All capital words. What a beautiful day. I ignored it. The next day, want to meet halfway tonight. Dinner? Question mark, question mark. I ignore it. My treat. I'm feeling really worthless. I could use a friend. Now, most guys would go, oh, okay. No, it's not how I roll. No, thank you. I've made alternative plans for tonight. That's all you have to do. There's nothing more powerful than saying no to a woman that when you think about it, you're going, oh, man, Vince, you're a dumbass. She's fucking hot. She's got that long hair. and She's she's really crazy to be a good lay. And oh, my God, my God. Yeah. <clears throat> so like, I call her the hot mess. She oh, loves it. She's like, I love that. She's like, I love that. Like, you are a fucking legitimate hot ass mess. I, I've, I've read more of the text, text stuff to, to Rob, and Rob's just jaws just going. Rawr. Well, that's where I was like, you need, to, <clears throat> we need to seriously talk about your physical safety. Oh yeah, I'm still, I'm still gonna bang her out. That's just gonna happen. Uh -huh. Um, because I like to live on the edge, and my life is mine, and I don't care. So, but she needs, she needs the Vince treatment. So we're going to do some outdoor bondage, probably in the Pine Barrens, maybe on the beach. I'm not sure. We'll see. But there will be video and, and uh, photos. But sorry, if you're not in Masking Geek Life, yeah, you don't get that shit. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so that's the power of saying no. <laughs> and there's Rob's kitty. Yep. That's right. See, that's yeah. what I want to see you with, see with um, Casanova's book. Cat, a cigar, and you're and you're reading glasses down your nose, <laughs> and a, a, a fantastic that'd be a great photo. And then we'll make it black and white, make it noir, make it noir, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll it. turn into a Rockwell painting. Yeah, no shit. Fucking awesome. That's right, a, de a degenerate Rockwell painting. Right, yeah. a Cockwell painting. <laughs> there we go. Huh. Norman Cockwell. <clears throat> yep. Everyone needs a bona fide BPT girl. See, I know what she is, and I know the, I know the pitfalls. I know how to handle her texts, which is let her run and then make a comment about one thing that gets keeps her emotionally charged, but doesn't set her off, and just keeps the ball rolling. I could do a course on that shit, I'm sure. Which, come to think of it, we are doing that. We're not going to talk about that now, but maybe later. Oh. We're, we're we're working. Yeah, we're well. You, we can if you want, Rob. You want to give a hint now? Oh. We'll hold on to that. <clears throat> that's uh that's something we're we're cooking up but it's it's going to be pretty to use the word intense lately so that would probably be incorporated into the uh the teachings and mentorship as it were is she looking at you or licking he, your beard he yeah he is he, he he's doing <laughs> the looking up adoringly type of thing or at least he was right yeah. yeah, and he is. I I took that one photo of him over your shoulder, the one where you put the uh -huh. red eyes to the yeah. And when I was down in your place, like that fucking cat is huge. Yeah, he's not, <clears throat> he's a big cat. I think if you stretch him out, he's almost as tall as you. Almost. Right. Sure. Look at this. You have a guy. <laughs> Somebody get a screenshot of that. <laughs> right there. Get it. That's fantastic. I'm sure Bull Rush will grab it. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful coat, too. Mm -hmm. Now, do you let uh, the cats sleep with you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Me casa su casa, as far as okay. I'm concerned. They, they, See, they, have, they have free range, free roam of the house. It's their house as much as it is mine. I was surprised. I, they, didn't, they didn't set my orgies off. Well, you know, and that's a good thing. I'm glad oh, they yeah. did. 
But see, like my ex-girlfriend, she had allergies so bad that the cats were not allowed in the bedroom. And I was okay with that because it's like, well, you know, the cats aren't fucking me. This chick is. So when, you know, and I get it. Her allergies were horrible with the cats, mm. but she still tolerated them and whatnot. And so while we were together, she was like, I really, I, I just can't have them in here. And I, and I got it. And I was like, hey, you know, I get it. It's not a big deal. So the cats, you know, were relegated to the rest of the house and not the bedroom. So we always kept the bedroom door closed to keep the cat hair down. Mm -hmm. But once she moved out, I was just like, ah, fuck it. Come on in if that's what you want. It's mine. Right. You guys don't bother me none. And so they do. They sleep on the bed with me. It's like, you know, I got cats everywhere is kind of right. You ever roll over and crush them? No, but I'll tell you, I've woken up sweating because they're body <laughs> heat on, you know, because they're layered <laughs> on me, the sons of <laughs> Yep. It's like, God, get off me, you fuckers. I know you're cold, but my God, I'm dying under the blankets and your own body heat. Yeah, right. They're little heaters. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but ever since the ex girlfriend, like, other women that show up i'm just like where well, i already let the cats in i'm like um if you have allergies you better take meds and if you don't find you get to put up with the fact that the cats the cats have higher priority than you this is their house not yours you're just a guest and so if the cats want to come in while we're sleeping you you know you're gonna have to deal with the cats you know, now when sex is happening, I throw the cats out. It's like, I don't need them humping my leg or something. It's like, oh, no, you can go the hell out of here. But when we're done and it's like time for night, night, let's go to bed. I'll open the door. And if the cats want to come in, they come in and they typically do, yeah. you know, and, and, and the women, you know, I've never heard them openly bitch. I mean, if they want to bitch, that's fine. It's like, I'm just dating you. I'm not marrying you. So I don't give a shit. You know, you can suck it up and deal with my cats because my cats have been here before you. They'll probably be here after you. So, fuck it. Mm -hmm. All right, gentlemen, everyone in the chat, we're coming up on the hour and a half. I'm going to keep these around an hour and a half. I think that's a yeah, good Yeah, I was going to uh, say, this uh, looks like a good closing point. It's a good closing point. So, as as we've been talking about, and it's the subject of today's chat, Rob, hold yours up. <clears throat> Both of them are same text, but uh, it's, yeah, I've got a bit of a... There you go. Go grab that for yourselves. I think you'll enjoy it. It's pretty good stuff. Um, we'll figure out what book we're doing next and uh, get this set up for the end of April. So there you go. Any parting words, Ron? No. All right, cool. There you go. Uh, so there you have it. Everyone in the chat who's here now and who may be listening and watching later. Thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate oh, I it. I do have something. I do have something. Oh shit. Okay. Study the masters. Don't study the dickheads. Study the what? The masters. Don't study the dickheads. Exactly. Yeah. We've shown you some of the masters today. So that's what we, we read and we uh, take notes on. So read the classics. I'll probably come up with, um, I may post this on the Masculine Geek site. I may have it for our members. Um, not just screenshots, but uh, brief intros and reviews, maybe like a one-liner of, uh, and the titles of all the books that I've read. And it's what's on my shelf that uh, yeah, essentially makes me a more well-rounded person where I've got my information and what I study and where I get my notes from. <clears throat> so, which have helped me innumerably throughout the years and i've and and rob has seen him and he's taken inspiration and now has him in his library so there you go all right rob take us out wow dirty